Hello there. So today's topic is strings, so let's get right into it. To create a string, you've done this several times in the past probably, and it's pretty straightforward. You can use the from function and you create a string like this, or you can create an empty string, and then string new, or a method that I like to use a lot because I feel like it's quicker, is you can do let s2, and then you do a string literal, so hello, dot to string okay and if I come here and I print line s and s2 uh, you will see that we get there we go hello hello okay so that's how you create strings now to update a string there's two main methods you're gonna use um, you can say for example s dot push string and just put any string literal so hello world okay and another thing you can do is you can just do s dot push instead push just a single character so I'm gonna push at uh, the exclamation point okay so if I come right here and I oh, we gotta make s mutable of course and if I come right here and I just print S and then I print S here again and I'm gonna print S before we do it you'll see that we get uh, hello and then hello world and then hello world exclamation point okay now concatenating strings is an interesting one in Rust because there's two main ways you can do it the first one is with um, plus so something you can do is you can create um, we just use now let's create a new string we'll say hello uh, s3 and we're going to create a string one to the string okay next i'm going to create another string it's going to be s4 i'm going to call it two dot two string okay now what i'm going to do is i'm going to concatenate the two so we're going to get 12 in the end now the way that i'm going to do this and this is very specific i'll say s3 plus a reference of s4 you know it's really important that you do things in this order okay and I'll show you why in a sec but let me just print the output of what we have here so if I cargo run it you'll see that we get 12 as expected but suppose that instead of doing the reference here I remove this and I put the reference here you see we get this error saying that cannot be used to concatenate this uh, string slice or uh, reference to string literal and a string okay and even worse I can't just remove the references and do it because we get that we can't concatenate that we expected a reference to string literal okay and that's because this plus is pretty much calling a function that has a signature that's more or less like self s and then sdr returning a string okay so it's pretty much doing something like this so we're getting a self which will be in this case a string so it's implemented to strings and we'll get this uh, reference for string literal so it has to be done this way and this has a couple of implications first one is that we can't access uh, S3 anymore so its ownership was transferred and the second one is pretty much just what I just told you that you have to be careful with types right um, but do note that here instead of having a string a reference to a string literal we have a reference string right what's happening here is something called coercing which uh, we'll talk about in a later chapter and now the second method to concatenate, which I prefer, is by using the format macros. Um, I prefer it because we don't lose ownership of anything. So let me just comment this out. I'm going to come here. I'm going to say let. Actually, I'm going to keep these two strings. I'm just going to comment this so we can still have reference to S3. And I'm going to create an S5. And I'm going to call the format macros 
which goes, it works pretty much like print line, except that it returns a string um, that we can put into S5. Uh, and now what we do is S3 and S4. And this way we can still access S3 and S4 after um, doing this. Okay. So if we just print you'll see that we will get one comma two. Okay, because I put the comma and whatnot. And this way you can get more complex concatenations, right? So yeah, that's about it for concatenating. Okay, now let's talk about indexing. So indexing in Rust is a little bit different than in other programming languages. And that's because of some restrictions that Rust adds on actually accessing bytes of that string. So in other programming languages, you might be used to doing something like um, a string name and square brackets zero, just like you will access elements in an array. But Rust doesn't allow you to do that because some characters are represented by more than one byte. So for example, I have copied this character, it's called, um, if you'll pronounce it right, it's called the, and this character is represented by more than one byte. So just for example, I'll print line this, and I'll get the character, I'll get it to a string, and I'll print bytes. Let me just change the default formatter, and if I come here, so that I had just printed it there, but you'll see that it's two bytes, 208 and 108. Just so you have a reference point, if I do this with age, and I run it, you'll see that it's just 104. Okay, so this is one character, well, this is two characters. Therefore, if I try to access the first character, or the zeroth byte, uh, we'll get something that's absolutely meaningless, because 208 by itself doesn't mean anything. Okay, so to avoid these mistakes, Rust doesn't allow you to do that. And instead, you have to resort to slicing. So the way that you would get uh, this character, if it was in a string, is you would do s0 to 1, or sorry, 0 to 2. Remembering that 2 is not inclusive, so we're getting bytes 0 and 1. Okay. If you want to get, oops, so this is for this, and for h, we would just do 0 to 1. Okay. Just to show you that I'm not lying, let's get age from s2. So we'll get print line, we'll do s2 reference 0 to 1. Okay, now if we run it, you'll see that we get age. Okay, so that's indexing in Rust. Now about iterating, um, I kind of spoiled a bit one of the ways you can iterate here but um, there's two main ways. The first one you can do uh, for, it's called b in s2.bytes. This way we'll access every single individual byte from that string. We can just print line it like this. So b. Or you can also do for, I'll call it c, and instead of bytes you can access characters and do C. Now if I run it, you get 104, 101, 108, 108, 111, and the equivalent characters. Okay, so that's iterating, pretty straightforward. Now I wanted to leave you with a little bit of insight into why strings are a data structure in the first place. And the reason to that is that you can think of strings as a wrapper around the vector data structure in which you can only have characters. Okay. And you can see the similarities by how we have we can iterate, we can access individual elements, and it actually contains multiple characters, okay, which is the definition of a collection, right? Multiple items rather than one. So yeah, that's just a final note that I wanted to leave you with. And I'll see you in the next video.